What's up guys, my name is Fran and welcome back to the channel and this is my 2019 4K video editing setup tour. Now everything featured in this video will be linked down in the video description below and just in case I forget anything, let me know down in the comment section and I'll be sure to add it to the description later. Starting off with the centerpiece or the core of this entire system is my 2018 Mac Mini. Now this system is featuring 32 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, an Intel Core i7-8700B processor, and 512 gigabytes of SSD storage. Now the GPU inside of this Intel Mac Mini is the Intel 630 HD. Now while this might be a decent GPU and it sort of can power 4K graphics, we definitely need something a little bit more beefier if we're going to be doing 4K video editing. And because of that, I just decided to add the Gigabyte Aorus eGPU enclosure to my Mac Mini setup. Now this eGPU enclosure is featuring Thunderbolt 3, 4 USB 3.0 ports, and as of right now, now this might change in the future, the MSI Aereo RX 560 4 gigabyte edition. Now I really like this eGPU setup because it's really small and convenient and can sit on my desk without taking up an entire surface. Now you can't have a 4K editing system without a 4K monitor. And for my 4K monitor, I went with the LG 27 UD6. Now this monitor features a thin bezel-less design, a 3840x2160 resolution, 99% sRGB coverage, and of course AMD's FreeSync. Now I won't be doing much gaming on this monitor, but it is really nice to know that it does feature FreeSync in case I ever decide to. Now if anybody out there knows about the LG 27 UD6 is that it has a really bad monitor stand. And because of that I went for an aftermarket one. And for mine, I chose the LX Ergotron ergonomic monitor stand. Now this monitor stand features a vase mount and it has full lift and tilt capabilities, which is really nice for sort of adjusting the monitor to where you want it. Now if you're gonna have high definition video, I think it's only right that you have high definition sound. And for my high definition sound, I decided to go with the Presonus Eris 3.5s. Now these are absolutely fantastic monitors. I mean, I'm not really an audiophile, so I'm not going to sit here and read a bunch of specifications off to you, but I can tell you just by listening to these monitors, the clarity and accuracy is absolutely amazing. And that's exactly what you need when editing audio for video. Now, in order to interact with all this technology, I think it's pretty important that you have good peripherals. And for me, I use sort of a trifecta of peripherals. In particular, I use the Apple Magic Keyboard with numeric pad in space gray. Now, I went with this one A because it matches my Mac Mini, and B, I love having an numeric pad. Now it's not as good as using a mechanical keyboard, but to be honest with you, it's pretty decent for using Apple products. Now, right to the right of that, I always use the Apple Magic Trackpad, and I have mine in space gray once again, because it matches my Mac Mini, but also it's really helpful to use when scrubbing through Final Cut Pro projects, and you need to scroll from the left to the right, pinch resume, it's really useful for all those use case scenarios. Now, while the Apple Magic Trackpad is a great input device, it doesn't take the place of a traditional mouse. And because of that, I did decide to also go with the Logitech MX Master 2S. Now, the Logitech MX Master 2S is a fantastic mouse. It does feature Bluetooth and allows you to program up to three different computers to one mouse. It also is rechargeable, so you don't have to continuously change the batteries. Now, I have a bunch of other random knickknacks on my desk, such as this iPhone stand, this light-up Bluetooth speaker, and also this random light-up globe. My favorite knickknack that's on my desk is actually my Tommins desk lamp. Now this is a basic desk lamp you can pick up on Amazon for like 20 bucks, but it looks really nice. It has a braided electrical cable and a nice wooden neck, and it also does feature my Lifex RGB bulb. Now Lifex makes some really nice bulbs, and I, go, I went with Lifex bulbs mainly because you don't have to have a base station to actually control all of them. It's really good for maybe using different colors while shooting some B-roll, or possibly just changing the overall mood of the room. Okay guys, so that is it for this setup tour. Like I mentioned before, I'll leave everything linked down in the video description below in case you guys want to check it out. And if you have any questions about anything in my setup, feel free to leave it down in the comment section below. Once again guys, my name is Fran. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you guys in my next one.